Hello everyone and welcome. Sorry I'm so close to this vlog, but today I'm going to share a ghost story with you guys. That is true, unfortunately. It's more of like, it's someone in the house kind of story. Not even so much a ghost, because ghosts aren't really real, as we all know. Despite the ghost adventures on TV and the travel channel. <laughs> but, um, so the setting this today is in the bed. All nice and comfy. I've got my pillows propped up. My cozy blanket. It's very silky. Just like this little cardigan I'm wearing. <clears throat> got my propel drink. My phone charging next to me. Looking at my view outside. That's where I'm normally vlogging. But yes, so let's get into it. These ghost stories... So these ghost stories kind of came about when, let's see, how can I do this without holding it? When we were living, Morgan and I were living with mom in high school, slash college when we come home to visit. So the house she built in Chattanooga was a brand new build. It was about 10 years old, and when there's always been noises and strange occurrences. Let's see, is there a way I can set this up? No. So there's always been strange noises in this house. When... It was, f it finally finished building, and we were done, and we moved in. We had a babysitter come over, because we were still really young, and watch Morgan and I, and we were, like, getting ready for bed. Morgan and I were both in our separate showers, and the babysitter was, like, in the middle of the hall, kind of the mediator, because we were fighting, and she was doing our homework, sitting there on the floor. And I was just about to get in the shower, and I heard this crash, like, ten dishes falling over in the sink kind of crash. And I was like, oh, mom's going to be so mad. And I was like, something we did in the sink fell over. And so I, ran, I threw my robe on and ran out to the hallway. And I was like, Abby, did you hear that? And she was like, yes, now go take your shower. I'm going to go check it out. I don't know what that was. And I was like, okay. And so we checked it. she checked it out. We came, Morgan and I got out of the shower. Morgan had heard it too. And she's like, what was it? And Abby's like, I don't know. I looked every inch of the house. Couldn't find what that was. But that was a very loud noise. And I don't know what that what, what that was. So we kind of just ignored it, told mom, and then fast forward about a month, mom was showing the house off to one of her friends. It's just her and her friend Lisa in the house. Mom was in, was upstairs and heard a loud shatter right from below, like unmistakably. Her friend was like, oh no, I think the worst, something happened, something happened downstairs. And mom was like, oh boy, this happened to the girls that last month, like I'm sure a light bulb had fallen out, it had unscrewed and fallen to the ground. It has to be in my bathroom somewhere. So they went downstairs and searched every inch of the house. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. To this day, nothing. And there's, like, it was a straight up, like, someone throwing a light bulb on the, on the tile, like, kind of noise. Nothing. So that was a little spooky. Fast forward many years later, we start hearing noises as the house settles. And when you walk upstairs, from when you're sitting downstairs, you can hear like each step. And you're like crack, 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 the whole house. It pop, crack, real loud. And it's like, okay, this is annoying. Everyone walking upstairs, you can hear. But, you know, throughout the years, we would hear those noises of the actual steps when we're downstairs and no one is upstairs. It's like, okay, it's just the house. So one time my dad came in for the weekend and we were on a vacation. And he stayed the night at our house before we got back. And he was in one of the, room, the guest rooms upstairs, and he's a pretty tough guy, but he woke up in the middle of the night from a noise, it sounded like on the porch, and he's like, oh, someone's breaking in the house. This has happened to him before, when hit my mom and him were married really young. So he went downstairs, creeped downstairs, and got one of the big butcher knives, and was like walking towards the, the living room, the porch area. There's nothing, so he searched the entire house with this knife in his hand, knowing someone was in this house, because he heard and there was nothing. He yells throughout the house, come on out, I'm gonna kill you. Nothing. And he searched everywhere. And he was slept, you know, with one eye open, like didn't sleep the rest of the night, had the knife literally in his bed. Like, my dad is not spooked by anything. Truly, he's like a big tough guy. So he told us about that and we we're like, okay. <laughs> so fast forward a few years after that, so one morning, Morgan and me and mom were getting ready for school. We're about to get in the car to go. And it was like six in the morning. Our school started really early. And my sister was in her bathroom across the way upstairs. And I was in my bathroom across the way upstairs, the other way upstairs. 
and I'm brushing my teeth and I hear a blood curdling scream like someone being murdered scream and it was Morgan and I was like what and she was just f flailing just mindless screaming down the stairs mom's like what 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 and she goes Kayla get down here and I was like oh my gosh there's someone in the house the way Morgan's screaming there's there's real danger here you can just tell and I was like oh my gosh so I didn't know what to do I paused in the room I was like what should I do with the killers like right here next to me up in the hallway I was like I just gotta get around the corner down the stairs and so I took off after locking myself in the room thinking it won't get me here I was like well I can't leave mom and Morgan out there so I ran out grabbed my phone grabbed go down the stairs we hop in the car left we didn't ask questions we didn't know anything when in the car we're like what happened Morgan what happened we're driving to school and Morgan's like I heard a knock next to my door when I was brushing my teeth and it was like here's her bathroom door two sinks the door to the toilet and then the toilet and so it was like on that back side of the toilet door like someone was in the toilet and she was sitting right there next to the toilet brushing her teeth on the other side of the door and like a very pronounced knock 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 so mom was like oh my gosh she goes well we're, we're busy we're all late we're busy we're not going to go back in the house tonight. When we go home after soccer, we're going to have granddad come over and look at it. And, we'll, and so later that night, we pulled home. It's like 8.30 p.m. after soccer. We get to the house. It's pitch dark. And none of the outside lights are on on the house, which is always like floodlights, always like the, the mailbox light and everything. I was like, that's weird. We had those on. So we'd go to open the garage door and then to call granddad. The garage door wasn't open. The light, the power of the entire house was out. And everyone else on the streets had power. So our electricity was cut off. And mom, of course, had paid the bills. So we call granddad, and he's like, you need to call the police. Because this is not a coincidence. If someone's in the house, they're waiting to kill you. I mean, <laughs> quite literally. So we had to call the police. And mom and the police walk, walked through every inch of our house and we had a lot of attic space a lot of like crawl space a lot of like hidden doors rooms everything the only thing they found was a human shaped hole punched through the sheetrock like someone just ran through a wall kind of hole in the attic area that was not there before because I was more in a nice little secret room we were in there like almost every night and that was never there and it's not like we never noticed it because it was in the main area it's a human shaped hole in the wall and the sheetrock and it's like or the plywood area it's like oh my gosh and the police were like okay whoever's here is behind the sheetrock area so they got you know call for backup had more people come in and cornered that area had mom go back outside and they went all along that line of the roof and like they're like man we checked every single square inch behind that, that spot and there's no one. Nothing and no one. They're like, I don't have to tell you that your house is okay. I don't know what happened, but that's, it's, it's, it's okay. There's no one there, literally. So we were f so freaked out. We spent the night at my mom's parents' house that night and in the daytime went back and it seemed okay. But um, the next story is, I was off in college at this point. My mom and sister came home one night and it was pitch dark again. And the <laughs> they they opened the door to go in. Power was working on and everything. Before they could even turn the lights on, they heard a lot of noise. And mom panics, and you know she's like, "Oh my gosh!" And she, they start to listen. And the printer in my mom's office was printing continuously, just blank sheets, do 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 do, boop, do 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 do, boop, and just spitting them out on the floor. And it had gone through like a hundred and fifty sheets. And mom was like, this has never done that before. What's going on? It's not a new printer. It's not an old printer. What in the world? And then later that day, or the next day, she was working in her office doing her master's degree. She was writing a paper. And one of the little metal lunch boxes on her office uh, cabinets, she thought had fallen because there was a loud noise behind her. It made her jump. But it was across the room, like right back where the door was. And it was literally on that shelf. It was sitting in the middle of the doorway. And my mom was like, okay, yeah. So that was that part. <laughs> Sorry, shaky. We're all cuddled up. It's the theme of the, of the stories. 
So we always knew the house was haunted, and the worst for me that ever happened was when I was in college visiting home for Christmas time. My mom and sister were in Knoxville visiting other family members, and I was wanting to be in Chattanooga with Cody's family because I never got to see Cody, but like once or twice every few months. So I was just staying in my house alone, and Cody was at his house, and he would pick me up in the mornings, we'd hang out, and then drop me off for bedtime at night, and he'd make sure the house was safe. He gave me like a baseball bat next to my bed. And I knew the house was haunted and spooky and whatever, strange occurrences, but my room was kind of secluded upstairs, so I locked the door. There's no attic access to my room. I was, I was safe. I was fine. At least I thought. So that night, you know, you hear noises, but you know it's just your imagination inside. So tuned that out, went to sleep, locked my door, and woke up in the morning, bright and sunny. I always did my workout videos before Cody would come over. I'd do my workout videos, take a shower, and have Cody come over. So I was in the living room, I did my workout video, and we were sell showing the house and selling it at that point. <laughs> God rest the people who got it. And <laughs> I finished my workout video early. I was like, well, what am I going to do until Cody picks me up? I've got like three more hours. Because I had woken up early that morning. And um, I decided to take a nap because I was tired. And there was a couch right there in the living room. So I'm like, I'm just going to, it's bright and sunny, all the windows are open, it's all perfect. I take a nap, and in my dream, I had a dream someone came in from the garage door and came from behind the couch, and I looked up and saw them, and I was like, oh my gosh, someone's in the house. And I knew it was a bad dream. Even while I was dreaming, I knew this was a bad dream. I, in the dream, he was pushing on my knees. I'm laying flat on my back, and he was pushing down. So they were, like, going backwards the way they shouldn't and breaking, and it was hurting so bad. And I was like, oh, I bet you my legs are in a bad position in, in real life. I thought that in the dream. And then I woke up after that because I was so panicked and my knees were hurting. And I was like, okay. I woke up and sure enough, my knees were like up against the little headrest thing. So like there's there nothing supporting them. So they were really hurting. Like that's where my dream stemmed from. Duh. And the house is spooky. So duh. Didn't think twice about it. And then as I sat up to go and take my shower... The door to the garage was wide open. That door was locked. And I know it was locked because I was home alone. I triple checked every door to make sure they were both the bolt was locked and the door handle was locked. And let me tell you what. This door was wide open to the, the, the garage. The garage door itself was shut, but the door to the garage wide open, just like in the dream. And oh my gosh. And that door has been known to open with air current from like the garage door being open. But two things. The actual garage door was closed. The door was locked. And that only happened when the door wasn't locked and wasn't shut right. Blind panic. Blind panic. I call Cody. He comes over like 10 minutes later. Takes 10 minutes to drive there. I'm like waiting outside in like my sports bra and pants and uh, shorts. I'm sure the neighbors were like... And Cody, I told him everything, and he searched the house with me, because I still had to get clothes on. He searched the house with me. Nothing. I was so spooked. I made him stay outside my door while I changed and took a quick shower. And then I left that night. I spent the night at his house in his guest bedroom and told Mom about everything, and it was just really spooky. So that was my personal experience. So my mom's had an experience, my dad and my sister. And my grandparents have heard all this, too. So we're not crazy, truly. And then that doesn't end things. My Nana's house. I think it was actually a person and not like a spooky thing. Because when I was in college, I would come to visit her a lot and stay with her. Especially in the summers. And I'd, you know, leave a mess in the kitchen sometimes, like with crumbs. And you always drove her crazy. But um, one particular day, I was back at school for the fall semester. And Nana calls me on the phone. And she was like, did you happen to come by my house today? I was like, Nana, I'm in the middle of like studying for finals. I don't even have a car on campus. No, I wasn't at your house today. And she goes, are you sure? I said, Nana, I swear. She goes, because my kitchen is really messed up. She goes, I, she's a neat freak. Her house looks pristine all the time. She's like, there's, there's crumbs all over my cabinets. And there's stuff on the floor. And the papers you, that I left on the counter were just thrown all over the, the kitchen floor. I was like, um... I swear I didn't do that. And Nana was a little concerned, so she started locking even like the door to her house from the garage door. And fast forward to the summer, Cody and I were staying with her. 
um, and I was working at an internship, and Cody was doing football and working at a uh, fast food place, and Nana was at work all day. Well, Nana got home first. She was the last to leave and the first to come home, and she noticed there was mustard all over the couch, or what she thought was mustard, and she was <clears throat> so mad. And she goes, Cody and Kayla, I told you you do not eat in the, in the living room. I was like, we didn't. I didn't even have breakfast this morning. And Cody's like, I didn't either. I was like, I grabbed a granola and left. And then Nana's like, well, I didn't notice it this morning, but someone sat in it or ate, or ate on the, the couch. I'm like, Nana, do you even have mustard here? And she's like, no, I don't, actually. And it was it was mustard. Like You can smell it and look. it looks like mustard, yellow mustard. And Cody's like, I swear it was not me. I wouldn't eat in your den anyway and look at my pants. I didn't sit in anything. And so it was just all over her couch. So Nana was like, and and the TV was on. The TV was on, like a channel, like one of the low channels she never watches. And so Nana was like, uh. So the weirdest part, the scariest part about Nana's incidents were, it was a few years after that, Evan had graduated from college. Um, Nana went to her closet and there were handprints, like motor oil greasy handprints, man prints on her closet carpet floor, and her attic is right above. Nana panics. I think she actually called the police and they came and checked everything out. Or maybe it was her, her son, other son. I don't know. But she was like, okay, maybe it's just always there. And she tries to clean it, it won't come up. It's just very defined handprints, like three of them. And it bothers Nana a lot, so she was like really scared. And you know, she, you know, kept her up at night. And then one time Morgan was home alone and she was like in her last year of college and me, Cody, and Morgan and Nana were going somewhere and Morgan's like, I'll be fine home. She's like, I just want to watch TV and relax. So she was at home for like an hour and she never moved from the chair. We left, she sat in the chair and then right before we got home, we called her like, hey, we're on our way. So she's like, okay. So she got up to go change clothes because she was still in her pajamas and she went right to Nana's bedroom and her closet light was on, which Nana, you know, very particular, her closet light would not have been on. And there was a fourth handprint. A fourth handprint. Morgan, blood curling scream, runs outside. We get home five minutes later. She says what happened. Sure enough, we go in there. There's a fourth handprint. Some things are hard to explain. And some things you can but things like this really bother you. And that's why I was so nervous about moving into this house. Because it's like, I don't want my own set of stories. But yeah, take what you want from this. It's just really weird. <laughs> and oh, oh, and at my, our house, Mom one time saw a very tall teenage boy in our garage. She saw him go in and went to go like confront him and be like, why are you in our garage? And there was no way out from like where she was standing. She watched the whole time. And... <laughs> No one was there. But anyway, thanks for tagging along. I hope you liked the story. Sorry this is such a close-up. I'm literally comfy in the bed. But, yeah. Thanks. Bye.